Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Royal Rumble campaign. It is episode 56 I think and that is typically where uh, a normal run of Legendary Iron Man would have long ended. And I'm a little bit at an impasse because I see just how much more content there is uh, to do in this run. But I also know how poorly long runs on XCOM are performing. Because people realistically don't have the stamina to go, most people don't have the stamina to go uh, through a 90 to 100 um, episode run. However, since I know that I also don't want to leave you guys hanging dry out here, we want to see how this ends and not just uh, pull the curtain and say, well, it was a good run. So we're going to continue that in the hopes of it actually being successful. I am still not uh, certain whether or not we can win that campaign specifically since all of the side events are now catching up with us, but the plan of the campaign generally is the following. We are continuing to throw out other factions. Uh, that is kind of the rule of the campaign that we have uh, set ourselves. And I also want to show you some of uh, the um, alien rulers. Uh, unfortunately, I think that the snake or viper king is um, has despawned and is no longer coming back so we've quote unquote beaten him but uh, not officially killed him anyways what i want to do is i want to continue the campaign and try to get as many factions out on the non-timed missions i will try to find a codex so that we can skull check that and um, also progress the uh, golden path storyline the problem that i do have with the golden path storyline at the moment is there is uh, a tug of war for the resources of scientists. I want to show you guys the new items, but equally so, uh, the moment that I research uh, items in the shadow chamber, we can no longer continue the normal research. So that's a bit of the problem. Anyways, just a few uh, general uh, comments around the campaign and how it is going. I'm quite pleased about the difficulty level and that I'm still in the run. So that's the positive uh, of it. I'm not so pleased about just, I haven't expected the volume of research and uh, just so many events that are uh, coming uh, onto us. It feels like an avalanche that has completely borrowed us and we're like slowly getting out of the snow. Uh, there's one hand out there, but there is still a lot uh, that needs to be done. And you can already hear the next uh, wave of snow coming. Okay, today it is Operation Patient Beast. And patient we need to be, because uh, the last time that we were trying to get a VIP, that ended in a bloody disaster. Today we're fighting against Marauders, so that's on top of the 28. So proceed with caution. Uh, Marauders are the psionic uh, mm, uh, skirmisher faction that you've seen the last time. And we do have just hardcore enemies all over. Let me let me just run you th uh, through them because they, they are really, really annoyingly hard. So we have brought our B team with us and apologies for the longer delay here. So we've brought our B team Roby, Russ, uh, both colonels already. Then we're trying to get Zirkim uh, also to colonel. The rest is unfortunately tired at the moment. And we filled it up with C team soldiers, Bubble Hayward and Inquisitor. I stick uh, stand uh, firm to my word that I want to use the prime team to actually infiltrate a facility very soon. But just look at the enemies and and realize what we're fighting against. So Advent Custodian Master, these were the guys with like a 70 hit points, 10 armor, ultra hardcore. Advent Custodians uh, by itself, 50 hit points uh, and a lot of armor. We do have uh, Advent Mark II Custodians, which were the upgraded versions, almost as difficult as the Custodian Master. So that in itself is already pretty nasty. Then. We got a couple of um, mechanical uh, units, Elite Collector Drone, Sectopod uh, Hunter, uh, that's the smaller uh, Sectopod, a Hunter Drone, uh, an Advent Spark, Venators, uh, that would uh, count as mechanical, and uh, Shield Bearers, uh, which would also count as mechanical, 
Advent Military Assault mech. I don't remember fighting those, but it doesn't sound pleasant. So that's seven different enemies that all uh, benefit from blue screen rounds, which is why you see quite a few blue screen rounds in our case. Uh, the Advent Custodians are the reason why I want armor penetrating uh, rounds. Okay, and then just to top it off to make it a little bit more digestible, we have Mutant Decurion, the strongest mutant version that we can find uh, so far. Elite Lancer uh, for instant knockouts. Then uh, Venators, I already mentioned, but it's worth mentioning them twice because they really, really suck. Then we do have Chrysalid Hunters uh, to make that a little bit more difficult. Some Elite Shield Bearer, Purifier, Elite Collector Assassins and Archons. So overall, not a very fun like melange of um, enemies. We do have uh, Zirkim to shred them and I brought Bubble for some extra shredding because we will need quite a bit of shredding. I think if my memory serves me well, uh, Death From Above is on Russ, and I'm not sure if he also had a shredding. He certainly had quite a few really nice skills, Implacable as an, as an example and Restoration, which will certainly help us. No, but no shredding on him. But Russ is going to be our saving grace. I'm wondering, do we need that Mimic Beacon on him, or aren't we better off uh, well, the Mimic Beacon is bound to him. I remember because he was part of the Prime group. Well, I tell you what, um, we'll give him Viper Rounds for some extra damage and we'll just go in without a Mimic Beacon. Uh, it's not like we haven't done that 10 times beforehand. Hayward would be a perfect candidate for the Mimic Beacon, but uh, I want to save the one Mimic Beacon that we do have for our Prime team. So, no joy for her. Um, a turret could be helpful, but again, that's potentially not happening. So, really, that's the team that we're dealing with, guys. It's definitely going to be quite a rumble if we're, if we're going there. And Keep in mind, the VIP missions always have the quite downside that if you're messing them up, you're going to lose your entire team. So I need to win this because I want to keep the continent bonus, which is tactical analysis. And that's why I'm bringing kind of a better team into this, but that's going to be a hard run. All right, without further ado, let's, uh, let's rock. All right, and we landed. Let's take a look. Low ground, and where do we need to go? Oh my gosh, that is the longest sprint in the history of an EVAC for a VIP ever. And we are, of course, not concealed. Well, that begs the question, left side or right side? Hmm. The right side seems tempting, but this here is a problem because if the enemies are here, there's a long way that we need to walk, whilst here it's a kind of fairly straight edge. Let us use our scout, Inquisitor. Moving all the way to here, nothing. Okay, that looks fairly decent. Equally, let's sprint up here. In case we're triggering something. Nothing. Okay, cool. Well, we will place all of the other units in between. And... Classical X Confession to not pull anything else because I do have my suspicions. It is eerily quiet here. No Place Hayward here against better judgment. Typically, don't want to leave anyone in the open. It's very unlikely that something is going to come. Okay. 
Okay, these are sounds from the custodians. And those are mech sounds, which I assume are the closest to our position. Camera just moved to the right hand side, so I think that's where the enemies are. Let's take a look what the heck is going on, pun intended. And we got a disorientation or random mind control. I think the disorientation is actually really, really good. That's in uh, map white flashbang for everybody who's not a mechanical unit. Roby moves up. Nothing, okay. We're doing the exact same on the other side with Inquisitor. Oh boy, there's tension in the air. Can you feel it? Sniper moves to high ground. To the highest of high grounds. Wait, 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 I see an Elite Lancer down here. And now the game just crashes. Too much tension in the air. Seem to be an Elite Lancer down here. At least that's what it says. Let me try to fix this. Attempt number two. I needed to restart, of course. And we now know that there is a, an Elite Lancer down here. Something that we did not know before. Move into here with Zirkem. And Bubble. Tell you what, move him here and let's have a good old overwatch. VIP moves to here, should not be a problem. We can always hide her downstairs at a later point. Or overwatches. We definitely need to ad address that Lancer problem here, sooner than later. Well, as always, it's not just a Lancer, right? <clears throat> Whom are we kidding? It is a mech and a Lancer. Nice. All right, that mech is not disturbing anyone anymore. Wait, there's another mech downstairs. Good shit. That was a nice hit. Oh, that's one of these nasty mechs. I, I absolutely love it how the enemies can just move into you and then still get a, a chance to attack you. Like, we had an overwatch trap and this guy was just moving through it and then took another shot. Yellow alert is just the best. A little spoiler, I can already see that unless... Yellow Alert is an absolute favorite of uh, the audience. That mod will not re uh, see a another season on this channel. Uh, not because I, I think the idea is bad, but I think there are a couple of very, very fundamental flaws with the mod. Ranging from the inability of that mod 
to kind of respect the normal course of uh, pot, uh, pot activation up to straight up situations where you have no counterplay and that pretty much sucks okay well now let's concentrate on uh, this mod this mod on the situation here everybody is going for inquisitor more little chrysalids Luckily, we got Retribution. Teaches them a lesson. Visitor is not so easy to be dealt with. Okay, and the Marauders are doing something behind the scenes. We are engaged with uh, at least two different packs for now. Nothing to be completely surprised uh, about. You would guess that we would run into trouble. So we got that one, we got that one, I got a couple of others. I actually like uh, the position here. So let's start with giving an 8 protocol to Zirkim for Overwatch this next turn. And then we're using Death from Above and the good old Implacable in a second. That's one hit. I'm just wondering. Give me a second. We could just kill this guy right here and right now. If we move over here, on the other side, we can still see him and we have an overwatch opportunity to, to that flank. I think that's the right play, because keep in mind, we still have uh, threat assessment on Zirkim. Okay, cool. Continue to have a problem with Hayward downstairs, which needs a solution. And that solution will be a good old shotgun to the face, I guess. Alright, another Archon, whom we also need to deal with. But before we come to that, um, let's address the options here. I don't want to pull him out of cover. So the brood mother certainly needs to die. Down to four. Before we continue here. Let's hit him at least once. Because we want to finish him. And that would happen. Ras essentially taking a shot from here. I think Ras is in a good position. This would be too aggressive. We might trigger others. He's down to how many hit points? 9, 10 with the armor. Okay, that's a kill. And another reset.
Good, death from above allows us to reposition over here. Where would we be able to see this guy? Good, so we're moving to here that does not provoke a uh, any overwatch. Should have potentially... Should have potentially used my grenade beforehand. Good, hunker, hunker down. Can we see? Nah, uh, we, we can't see Roby. That is unfortunate because Comet Presence onto him would have now been a really, really good move. Comet Presence and then he can take another... He can have another go at the Archon. As it stands, the Archon hopefully will hit into into uh, him, but there's always the chance for a Blazing Pinion. Bubble. Hmm. We need to get closer to the front line. So that's an overwatch. We're healing. To keep Haywire uh, nicely topped up. And we have another overwatch. So we're in with three overwatches plus a blade storm. Should be enough to kill those guys, specifically since both Zirkim and Bubble have relatively good aim. But maybe he's just melee attacking, and in that case it would be into untouchable. There's the disorientation. Alright, so, well. It's official. The Marauders have been triggered to... Four, five. Packs of five. And we're already seeing uh, the early signs of a chrysalid infection. Can't say that I like what I'm seeing. Alright, reload, and let's hit this guy. This might even be a kill. No, not quite. Alright. Moving to here, that is a kill. Then implacable to move up further. Moving as far as we can over here. Still not seeing any signs of activity where we are. Bubble moves up. Zirke moves up. I like the double... Um, the double cover positions here. I think we're just 
going to go to here. We can always pull up a little bit later. Not sure what the fire will do. VIP cannot take loot if I'm mis not mistaken. Let's try it. Well, apparently the VIP can take loot, so they are useful for something after all. I'll tell you what, Hayward moves in a little bit closer. One thing that I learned is you always have to move towards the target on these uh, VIP missions, because otherwise the distance at the end will be too far for you to cover. Nice little hit. Uh, sector pod is uh, ready to get killed. That's an explosion. On the deals, even more damage. Fantastic. Alright, so the Marauders have four left over now. No, not a Venator. I hate them with a passion. It's one of the worst enemies. One of the worst enemies. Period. Well, lovely. More chrysalids. More chrysalids. Ah, come on, you could have hit this guy. The Marauders try to fight back. Generally like what I'm seeing, but you guys have grenades. Use them, for the love of God. They just pulled the custodians. That was a good grenade. Well done. Good. Starting to clean up this mess. Unfortunately, can't get over. Implacable to just get a tiny bit of distance. Okay, so we had a Venator here, right? Where is that guy now? Why aren't we seeing them anymore? All valid questions, I, but I unfortunately don't have the answers to them. Oh, there, there we go. Okay, I think, I'm not sure, but I think that this should disable the Venator's ability to duplicate. Is 
stunned the Spectre and took him out. And clearly did not take away the ability to duplicate. Let's get the Spectre. Continuing with death from above. Aggressive movement to here. Bubble is going to be our front line. The ammunition problems. Let's get that Venator down. Good. Ana here. Hunkering down. Can't reach that other mech. We gotta work with what we have for now. Which is setting these guys up, killing them, and setting up a nice kill zone overall. I mean, look, that wouldn't would have been really good. That's still fine, but he has no ammunition, so uh, not not good. This could be a solid kill. Nine hit points. More like zero hit points. Very good. So we got that uh, battlefield cleaned. Still an advent shield bearer. And that nasty advent mech. And I'm wondering. Whiplash deals extra damage to the mech. So that's not bad. Problem is we also need to reload. Oh, we have three reloads. Nice. Nice. That could be a kill. It, matter of fact, is. Good job. I like it. I like what I'm seeing. Running and gunning with Roby to the front line. And that could be another kill. Oh boy, that turn just uh, turned out to be unbelievably successful. Moving to full cover. Untouchable as well. Uh, not good. I am the harbinger of your ascensions.
Well, tell you what, we are rather overwatching because that gives us Guardian. Guardian can trigger multiple times and who knows uh, who is going to come. Maybe we're actually going to kill someone. It's not bad Advent is putting themselves between the Marauders and us. And it's a very scrappy fight. Everybody is like every, everywhere, which benefits us because we do have an incredibly clear fire line. And whatever is coming in our, uh, in our way, we're essentially just killing it. That is a problem because uh, the chrysalids are multiplying faster than bunnies. Alright, takes a shot, misses. Fair enough. Yeah, fantastic. More chrysalids. I think the marauders are almost done. I don't think there is anyone left. At best, one or two. Oh, come on. Don't do this to me, game. I had a successful turn. Okay, I'll I'll try to rectify this, guys. Hopefully it works. Hey, okay, back. So, I replayed the turn as accurately as possible. Of course, you cannot always influence the the outcomes. The Venator in this case uh, teleported and uh, landed up here, so the order of actions were slightly different. At the end it worked out, relatively speaking, uh, the same. I even moved Roby into the same position to trigger that additional pack. Although, of course, knowing that they are there, I wouldn't have done that. But anyways, want to be as honest as possible to really keep, keep the same um, outcome. Now, let's hope this time it's going to work better. The biggest problem here is that Advent is now overrunning the Marauders, and unless the Marauders come up with some miracle save, they will very much uh, perish here, and Advent is running into us. Luckily, we still got that full disorientation uh, ready for us, so... The idea now would be that uh, next turn we're trying to disorient uh, them as much as possible. Cute. A drone against the Ripper. Well, at least they focus on the drone, I guess. Good. The admin military mech stays back. That is not bad. Actually helps us quite a bit. And this is a shot into untouchable, so not bad at all. All things considered. Now, Advent will start to very much move uh, on into us. Of course, not before killing quite a few civilians and creating more of these nasty bugs. Good, finally. Finally. I am thinking whether or not it is a good idea to hack immediately. Potentially not yet. We keep that sort of in our back pocket 
The animal enemy will charge into us. And that'll be to our advantage. Just trying to get rid of as many targets inside as possible. In case you're wondering, I didn't use Whiplash. Might as well do it uh, now as a almost completely wasted ability, but uh, then it's gone. Uh, I used it in the original attempt, so I don't want any advantages here. Got a purifier on this side. Should we keep the chain shot for the mechanical beast? We already know that there is at least one major enemy coming up. But we got chain shot next turn on Zirkim, so we should be fine. Let's get that purifier. Good. So that's one potential grenade uh, that is not flying in our direction. I am thinking about team working over just to put him into a cover spot. Alright, so this year will get us in a position for a flank. And maybe a kill. Okay, that worked out very well. Got a flakable, could theoretically get back in position here. Um, I think Zirkim is just going to overwatch. I'm actually considering moving bubble. Mainly because this window here is directly flanking him. Moving to here instead. Action efficiency means heal whenever you do have the time to do that. Before taking an overwatch. Another overwatch here. And another overwatch here. I position myself here. That allows no view through the window. That means the heavy mech, uh, which was back here, needs to double move. And Zirkim also overwatches. Okay, if chrysalids are ju uh, charging in, should be ready. Custodians, uh, luckily for us, aren't that threatening from afar. Good, so this guy is already triggering quite a few overwatches. More custodians are coming in. They are at a disadvantage, though, because uh, they need to fight through open ground, whilst we do have high ground positions and can much more easily engage them. This guy double needs to double move. Okay, luckily, we, for us, we have cleared that in advance. Okay, and more chrysalids like I was expecting would happen. Okay. 
All right, so. This here should hit three targets. And the big magni seems to be somewhere here. And by big mech I don't I don't mean the food. Reloading Roby. Let's start setting up the custodian. That's a miss, unfortunately. Too bad. Uh, we need to reload. There is still that mech in there. But before we do anything further, one healing for bubble. Still don't need the disorientation. We might need that next turn. Not a hundred percent kill. Move over here. I want to see that that mech. That's the furthest I can go. Still can't see it. Seems to be not there. Which means we're setting this up again. Another kill. I think we're just trying to get rid of some of the chrysalids, even if that doesn't trigger death from above. Rasta's his last free reload, Overwatch. I'm trying to get some Guardian procs. One hit, Guardian. Okay, now the disorientation definitely would uh, work well.
Okay, cool. All right, I'm expecting the chrysalid storm towards us. We still are okay timing wise. I think we're immune to poison. Yep, immune to poison. Okay, cool. Well, I can tell you, first things first, now is the time to get that 100% disorientation. Just to give us some breathing room. Secondly, dealing the maximum amount of damage. We're starting over here. Just shredding every everyone and this here is our main target. The military mac down to 19 that's good i got three hits three times for reset all right so that's one Nice. Oh, wow. Fantastic hit. Love it. And this is number two. So we got a custodian mark two down there. Position half cover isn't all perfect, but nothing really is perfect here. Starting to shred this guy. And we're down to 32 hit points. Okay, cool. Well. What's our chance? Our percent. Well, we could move to here. Take some more of the heat. Stay where he is. Move to here. Be the main target for the chrysalids. We would be low on ammunition. I still think it's worth it. Not flankable, well, it's flankable from up here. Whom are we kidding? But there is not a non flankable position. Now, I think we're staying where we are, and instead, just try to deal as much damage to set this guy up for a kill. Unfortunately, that's just a 66% shot. Hate to waste important turns here. Re reload. No. That's the best we can do. 
I need the reload on Russ. We cannot. We cannot gamble with that one. It's unfortunately no reset for Hayward, but that'll be a kill. Russ gets the reset, and that is a reload, which is so desperately needed. Now back to Zirkim, combat presence. Yes, please. We still got that Advent Custodian. And I guess the question is, could we take him up? Likely not. So, Zirkim, who is already hurt, needs to fall back. It's a 50-50. Pull him and then we can rip jack him if he tries to move. I think I'm preferring the 50-50. 60% actually. Now the rip jack would have been equal chances. Gotta heal Zirkim, he's not immune to the poison, unfortunately. Alright, I'm being shot at. Come closer, come closer, dear friends. Alright, that gives us untouchable on Roby. So many chrysalids. Okay, one heal for Zirkum, and we got four shots. No more free reloads, unfortunately. That's a good target. Maybe for last shot. Not sure yet. Okay, Zirke moves up. We take that Advent Custodian next. The guy has taken a bit of damage. Not much yet though. And we need to fully shred him, so to be honest, Bubble is in a decent position. We just need to stand our ground for now and weather the onslaught. Once the custodians are gone, we should be off much better. 23 hit points, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, 
where is the closest chrysalid? Um, let's kill this guy. That's hair trigger even. We do have death from above, right? Yeah, cool, good. Well, in that case, let's not waste the hair trigger. Two chrysalids down, which is fantastic. And just dealing some damage over here. Nice damage, actually. Some good damage. That is killable. When XCOM becomes a math game, you know that you have reached the master tier. All of the decisions count. Good. He will take another beating once he would move. And I think, even though I need to reload next turn then, this is still a decent choice. Also debuffs his ability to sh uh, to shoot. There is still the Advent Custodian Master. Holy shit! Do I not want to fight him? I have an idea. Taking on, we're taking Untouchable here. How many hit points? Six. Implacable. Moving us just there so that he thinks we're an easy target, but we aren't. Good. I've only seen six or seven targets. I can't believe that I'm that it is air quotes only. But I'm only seeing six or seven targets. Oh, yeah. he goes on overwatch, that's good. Because we need to push in soon. Very soon. All of the chrysalids are moving forward as expected. Good. I need to take a break here. Um, got a business appointment, but I will continue the mission in a second. All right. See you guys. All right. <clears throat> business meetings over. Time to save the world again. Time for some XCOM. So I just realized we have five turns. Didn't just realize it, but when I was rebooting the game, I noticed that we're three full moves away from getting <clears throat> to the target zone. And having those sorts of references always helps you to understand whether or not you're well on time or if you're essentially too slow. And what I would want to do for now is I want to make sure that we're pushing far enough forward so that we're not running into an issue. Meaning, instead of triple moving there, <clears throat> I would move, shoot, move, shoot. So that is two sim single moves, but always with shooting. So that in itself, uh, over the next two turns, essentially I would do an equivalent of one full turn of movement. So. Say we have three more turns left over and then it's just two double moves. Rinse and repeat, move, shoot, move, shoot. Which means technically we're ready to exit as long as we're continuing to move every single turn from now. And that is really important. So 
when we are looking at uh, the type of enemies that we're dealing with, the only one <clears throat> that is still uh, left outstanding besides uh, the chrysalids is the Advent Custodian Master. So what I want to do is remove in. Chrysalids do not care about cover. And this custodian here is not allowed to survive the round anyways, which very much means we got to deal as much damage as possible while still moving forward. Good. Chain shot. Hopefully sets him up. <clears throat> Down to 16 hit points. Good, good, very good. Let's be clever here. <clears throat> We're moving. We're grappling. There we go. And we're then taking the shot. Skirmisher is always super, super agile. Now with that, we're down to nine hit points, so that's a kill here. Which will trigger Implacable, so, and Death from above, so that's really good. Equally, if we're killing this, that's the shot for the kill, and we're using the death from above momentum to effectively move down here. Okay, we do have Theoretically, threat assessment. And I'm wondering, I mean, just double move wouldn't be helpful. Could move and kill one, maybe that chrysalid hunter up here. Or I put a threat assessment up. And hope for multiple shots. I think that's what we're going to do. Ross moves up. And gives himself an aid protocol. So we got plenty of chrysalids near us. All of them six hit points. I tell you what, <clears throat> let's stick together so that there is a dual uh, dual blade storm between Roby and Inquisitor. And the VIP moves shortly behind. Okay, we need to hope that the chrysalids are not just running into the VIP in the hopes of just easily killing him. Elsewise, it would be one of those BS moments. Nice. Good hit. Good. Guardian. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> we have more. Uh, that was a miss, unfortunately. But we have one un uh, charge of untouchable. Uh, 
Ah, that's a miss. That's a very unfortunate. Good. Well, could have been worse. I I guess could have been worse. Move into here. That's one kill. Alright, come on. Come on, game. That's the second kill. Chrysalid Hunter. Gets killed by Blade Master. I like that. And we're moving up to the very front. Just in case there is still someone else out there. Could reload. But I think we're not going to do that. Instead, the name of the game is just move as fast and as far as possible. Good, Chrysalid Poison is a bit of an annoyance. Alright, more chrysalids. <clears throat> and even more chrysalids. So now is the perfect time to just leave and be done with it. Oh well, fantastic. Okay, I tell you what, running and gunning for that free reload, then a kill, and well, that's implacable and untouchable. So implacable to move up here and basically protect us against the remaining chrysalid. But next turn, we can evac uh, the VIP. Edward also needs to leave. Good. Now let's, uh, since uh, the grapple ho uh, grappling hook is ready, let's just Reload. Oh, cool. Well, we have parkour. That means Russ could get an extra action. We can grapple up next turn. Russ will gladly take that extra action. Because what it allows him to do is to stop the poison and really heal every single one. With a lot of two points of damage, one point of damage, and I think by now we should be relatively safe. Good, Bubble already disengages, that's okay.
Now it's just a matter of dealing with all of the chrysalids. We have untouchable. Very good. That worked. Oh boy, Roby. He's missing like a lot. Okay, like I mentioned, we're a bit ahead of the curve, so everything here should be fine. Wait a second, uh, I will definitely take that free kill on low ground. Oh, we were out of ammunition, well, fantastic. Good lightning hands, <clears throat> just making it easier for us to get up here, because that guy is in the way. Fantastic. Lots of extra kills. Inquisitor gets up here. Let's feed another kill to Inquisitor. Not sure if we already got a promotion. Maybe, maybe not. Getting him out of here. VIP also moves up and... Zirkim begins to move up as well. Cool part is since the uh, fun fact, since the armor uh, counts as uh, light cover, or half cover, he can actually see around the corner, and not that it will really make a big difference, but might be able to kill the cocoon. Good, we're moving to here. And let's kill this cocoon. Nice hit. Well, just one damage shy. Alright, see you later. 66 out of 69 enemies. I think that was a successful rescue. And a good lesson in how to build up a fire line and use the hack mid uh, mid mission in order to uh, to make sure that the onslaught of the enemies that is just running into you is not continuing custodians were fun uh, the venator was not a lot of fun but luckily we could uh, take him down the a uh, lot of mechs were there, but we were prepared uh, thanks to the blue screen rounds. Yeah, and overall, uh, I mean, the team performed quite well for being kind of a hodgepodge of uh, the B team. And a few, uh, a few operatives out of the C team. So for that, they actually worked quite well. And I'm sincerely hoping that we get kind of the kernel... Uh, promotion and maybe even a promotion for one of the low level guys good let's land and get the sweet sweet promotions shall we And we got one promotion for a low-level operative, but the one that I really wanted, Zirkim Major to Colonel, did not happen. Oh, two actually. How could I overlook uh, that? 
Um, so we got tactical rigging. I think we're actually going to go for it. Return fire isn't bad either, but both together are a bit too expensive. The slash attack is not so good. I think we're actually going for tactical rigging. The return fire, I could see that um, being another option. But I don't want to spend XCOM ability points into Inquisitors, uh, into, into Inquisitor himself. He has all of the core abilities. Technical rigging just <clears throat> makes him a bit more versatile. And here we're going for Salvo. Bubble has finally made it to major tier. Good lord, well done. And uh, Zirkim is way more kills, but unfortunately still not uh, fully leveled. Good, we got Dr. Anna Ivanover, an engineer from Russia. Wow, the game slows down noticeably because we're now in the end game and the mods are actually making it more difficult. So we do have a few engineers left over, might as well position them here. And I am wondering, wouldn't now be a perfect time to, to go and do the facilities? Because the mysterious loot can wait. We just had our mission. So there is only one more mission that's about to come. And we got the prime team ready. So might as well go with the Prime team and I will leave it up to you to leave a comment down below to uh, tell me which of uh, the uh, alien rulers you think is going to be next. Uh, we're definitely going to go into one of the facilities with an alien ruler, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts as of whom we're going to meet. Thank you for watching and if uh, you don't want the alien rulers to rule the world uh, give uh, this video a thumbs up as it is the only way to interrupt their imbalanced action economy thanks uh, for a lot and see you in the next mission bye bye guys take care